Hi, we're Adrienne and Alex Wiseman Rose. This is our grandmother, Kay Kinsella Rout, who has lived in East Lansing since 1967. She and our grandfather, Les Rout, were both professors in Michigan State. He in history and she in the Department of American Thought and Language. Hello. Grandma, where did you live before you moved here? Well, I was born in Salve, New York and I went to college in Syracuse at Lemoyne and then to Stanford for grad work. And when I came here to teach, I met your grandfather, who was a black man from Chicago who'd gone to Loyola and then to Minnesota. But in between, he went to South America with the Paul Witter Sextet and carrying a big baritone sax that he won at the Notre Dame Intercollegiate Jazz Competition. This is it. And this is him playing in the background. And this is the album cover from the recordings they made when they played at the Kennedy White House in 1962. What grade were you in when the Supreme Court decided the Brown v. Topeka desegregation decision? I was finishing seventh grade. That was May of 1954. Just like exactly 60 years later, you guys were finishing seventh grade in 2014 right here at McDonald's. Do you remember it? I remember the white northern people feeling very superior. We don't have segregation. Our ancestors fought in the Civil War to free the slaves. We were oblivious to our own racism. And we didn't realize that the Supreme Court had actually started a revolution and that revolutions were going to involve bloodshed. There was a lot of that over the next 10 years. You said over the next 10 years? How bad was it? Well, just imagine this now. If you were 13 in 1954, how old would you be when the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964? Um, 23. Right. And all during that time, you saw bombings and shootings and fire hoses and police dogs and a lot of killing, including kids. Like Emmett Till, a kid from Chicago just like you, went down to Mississippi to visit relatives. He didn't understand the rules of segregation. They killed him for it. There was just the first one, really. So that's why they had to pass the Civil Rights Act in 1964, to make it a federal offense to violate people's civil rights. Now, if all that was going on, and you had never gotten to college, and maybe had no chance of going, you'd start to give up hope, you see? You'd think, where is the dream? And you'd get mad. So, what happened? Well, black people got sick of demonstrating to desegregate one lunch counter, one school, one bus line. None of that made anybody any money, see? The Northern blacks didn't really go along with Martin Luther King's nonviolence anyway that much. In fact, Malcolm X had suggested he should teach it to white people instead, right? Mm -hmm. So, inner cities exploded, like Detroit, 1967. As a matter of fact, the peak, peak prime came in April of 1968 when Martin Luther King was assassinated. A lot of cities burned. So what did white people think? They were scared. They were angry. What? Here in the North? They blamed the liberals for passing the Civil Rights Act and bat pushing things in general and uh, as, a, as a tribute to John Kennedy, who was assassinated right before that, in November of 63, see? So they switched, became conservative, and that anger and fear elected Richard Nixon in 1968 and 1972. You must have been pretty brave to start an interracial marriage in 1969. We took it for granted that things were going to improve. I didn't really believe Bobby Kennedy when he said in spring of 68, uh, right before he was assassinated, which was two months after Martin Luther King, that a black man could be elected president in 40 years. But he was right, on the dot. Election day, 2008. Anyway, we got married at St. John's in November of 1969. And we never left East Lansing. Was this a safe place to live? Yes, it was. This was a liberal area, and although there were some people who didn't like our marriage, nobody burned crosses on the front lawn or anything. Your grandfather died in 1987, and he never saw any of his grandchildren. But if he knew, he'd be thrilled, Alex, that you're playing baritone now. 1987 was quite a while ago. How old were you then? I was widowed at 44. I had made sure there would be two people between my children and myself. I mean, in the bread, bread line. 
And uh, so I had a PhD and tenure at the university. I never retired until 2005, and I'm still in the same house. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Grandma. We really learned a lot. Thank you, boys. Bye.